How many plastic containers would it take to build a skyscraper like this? Would you move into an apartment building made from the same materials as your toothbrush, phone case, and water bottle? It might sound ridiculous, but the truth is, much of the infrastructure around us, from construction materials to power cables, depend on plastic. So if all the plastic on Earth were to suddenly disappear overnight, we'd be in a lot of trouble. And no, I'm not talking trouble like trying to survive without our smartphones or finding new ways to store our leftovers. I'm talking about airplanes falling from the sky, cities descending into darkness, and our medical system plunging into chaos. But at the same time, our reliance on plastic doesn't seem to be too good for us either. Out of all the plastic we use on Earth, only 10% of it ends up being recycled. The rest ends up in landfills, incinerators, or worst of all, our oceans. It's estimated that anywhere between one to eight million tons of plastic enter our oceans every year, harming marine life, damaging ecosystems, and introducing microplastics into our food chain. So it begs the question, if plastic disappeared tomorrow, would it save the planet? Or would it destroy modern civilization as we know it? Clearly, we have a love-hate relationship with plastic right now. Today, we use plastic more than ever. In packaging, electronics, construction, transportation, medical devices, you name it. But the problem isn't how much we use plastic, it's that we haven't figured out how to reuse it effectively. We've poured tons of money into making plastic stronger, lighter, and more versatile for all kinds of uses, but there's never been the same kind of investment into what happens to all that plastic once we're done with it. Now you might think, hey, I always recycle my plastic, isn't that enough? Yeah, well, no, not exactly. Recycling plastic isn't as straightforward as it seems. Let's take a closer look at that recycling bin. In it, you might have a water bottle, a PVC pipe, and a styrofoam container. They're all plastic, but they're not created equal. Each type has its own chemical properties, and not all plastics are recyclable in the same way. Plastic items are categorized by resin identification codes. Those are the little numbers inside the recycling symbols. The lower the number, the easier it is to recycle. So a water bottle, a type 1 plastic, is relatively simple to process. But a styrofoam container, type 6 plastic, that's a whole different story. And just like there are different types of plastic, there are different types of recycling. Recycling falls into two categories, mechanical and chemical. Now, mechanical recycling involves sorting plastics by type, melting them down, and reshaping them into new products. Sounds simple, right? Yeah, well, except it's not. Sorting is labor-intensive and expensive, and contamination, like that blob of ketchup that you were too lazy to rinse out of the bottle, can ruin entire batches. But because of these limitations, only certain plastics, mainly types 1 and 2, can be recycled this way, while the rest end up in our landfills and oceans. The good news is, is that there's actually a solution to all these limitations. And it's not just a distant dream. It's a technology that's already taking shape, but we'll get to that later in the video. First, let's look at one of the more dramatic proposals that's been floated around in recent years. Why don't we just get rid of plastic altogether? Just make it disappear. Well, as we discussed at the beginning of this video, that might be one of those ideas where you should be careful what you wish for. Imagine waking up one morning and something feels off. Well, your alarm clock didn't go off. It's plastic casing and circuitry are gone. Confused, you reach for your phone, only to realize it's vanished too. You stumble to the bathroom, but your toothbrush toothpaste tube and shampoo bottle are missing too. And that's just the beginning. Your fridge isn't running, its plastic components, shelves, and liners are gone. Milk cartons have collapsed into puddles on the floor. Prepackaged food is spoiled and 
Your coffee maker? Nowhere to be found. Panic sets in as you look outside. The entire city has gone dark. No electricity because our power lines failed without the plastic coatings that keep them safe. Planes fall from the sky, crashing because they've suddenly lost critical plastic parts. And hospitals? Total chaos. No syringes, no IV tubing, no life-saving medical equipment. It looks like we've been thrown back to a time before plastic. A time most of us aren't equipped to handle. You see, without plastic, society isn't just inconvenienced, it's paralyzed. So maybe getting rid of it altogether isn't the answer. Oh, what if we didn't have to choose between modern convenience and protecting the environment? Well, some serious cutting edge solutions are being developed right now that could give us the best of both worlds. And one of the leaders in this game-changing tech right now is right here in our backyard in Ontario, Canada. Let's go check it out. Say hello to Aduro Clean Technologies. They're tackling the plastic problem head on with an innovative process called hydrochemolytic technology. Unlike mechanical recycling, which just melts plastics down, HCT takes it to the next level. It's a type of chemical recycling that breaks plastics apart at the molecular level, turning them back into their basic building blocks. Here's how it works. First, they take solid plastic waste, shred it up and mix it with water, a catalyst, and a hydrogen source. This mixture goes into a reactor where heat and special ingredients break the plastic down into smaller, more useful pieces. What comes out? High purity liquid oils that can be turned into brand new plastics or even fuel. Their process uses lower temperatures than most recycling systems, which means it uses less energy and creates a smaller carbon footprint. But it also tackles a deeper issue. Most plastic comes from fossil energy sources like oil and natural gas. These are non-renewable resources and extracting them not only depletes what's left, but also releases huge amounts of greenhouse gases. By reusing the plastic we've already made, Aduro's technology helps keep these resources in the ground, reducing our reliance on fossil fuels and cutting greenhouse gas emissions at the same time. Aduro isn't just recycling plastic, they're rethinking how we use it. Their process is all about creating a circular economy where plastic isn't just thrown away, but recovered, reused, and given a second life. I know you're thinking, if this technology is so great, well, why isn't it a household name? Well, Aduro, after 12 years of extensive R&D and building their patent portfolio, is currently in full swing, scaling up their technology and building up their pilot plant this year. With eight patents and closely guarded trade secrets, Aduro is moving from experimental setups to commercial scale operations. With the right support, this tech could totally change how we deal with plastic waste. Want to learn more about how Aduro is revolutionizing recycling? Well, click on the link in the description and see how you can be part of the solution. Okay, so what's the takeaway here? Well, just because something's causing problems doesn't mean getting rid of it overnight is the answer, because that could create even bigger problems. Let's keep that in mind before trying any other wild ideas, like taking our trash and throwing it into a volcano. What, we, we already tried that and it was a total disaster? Yeah. Well, that sounds like a story for another What If.